This is a recording on the uh, geological story behind the Atlantic Ocean and obviously the growth of oceans by spreading at the central ridge by volcanism and uh, the fact that one ocean frequently closes and is followed by another on a similar pattern. The one place where this can be viewed uh, in the present day is in Iceland because it's one of the few areas where the uh, central ridge of the Atlantic Ocean is exposed. It's a little unusual in that it's a very hot spot and so frequently volcanic, more frequently probably than uh, the average situation along the uh, mid-ocean ridge. During uh, the past uh, month, the levels of seismic activity have been rising up to a point of a seismic crisis uh, on August the 4th. This is uh, 2022. There had been an early, earlier system um, of volcanism started in March. It's been on for six months or so, has quietened down to the point of uh, geysers and a few things like that, to the south of Reykjavik in the southwest of Iceland, where these green stars are shown. On and around August the 4th, there was an earthquake uh, swarm, which uh, started just to the northeast of that old volcanic center, a few months old, and it was the site of a new fissure eruption. Within 48 hours, there were more than 5,000 earthquakes registered uh, just prior to the eruption, and there were several events there that were quite significant, up to about the level of 5.4. So here is a view, uh, less than a day into this eruption, this new eruption, August the 4th. And the volume of lava erupted um, is something the order of a room full, you might say, every second, which is fairly significant eruption to be wandering around the front of the um, volcanic flow, lava flow. Why is it so? Well, this is uh, a geological specialist, a tectonic map of the Atlantic Ocean today. On the left, of course, is uh, Canada, a little bit of, um, uh, or in USA, a little bit of South America. You can see Hudson Bay showing in white. And if you jump across the far side, more easily to recognize that's so on the uh, right-hand side of the picture, um, Africa, Spain, Britain, and Scandinavia. So this is the uh, rift that is uh, the present Atlantic Ocean. Uh, northern and central Atlantic Ocean. And uh, across the lower portion of this, I've written the ages of the banding of volcanic rocks that formed in the central ridge as is going on today in Iceland. So you put a zero age on that little pink zone down the central ridge of the Atlantic. And the spreading is uh, a mirror image on either side of the mid-Atlantic ridge. So the brown rocks are something of the order of 50 million years, and the oldest portion of the present-day Atlantic is about 180 million years, shown in a light blue there. Um, there's a failed rift which occurred a little later, or around uh, 100 million years ago, between uh, Greenland and uh, the Canadian islands, or Arctic islands of Canada. So that's uh, the pattern of the current Atlantic Ocean, but there have been several previous versions of the Atlantic. Uh, after they've been closed, they've reopened along sutures or uh, uh, rifts that have been pretty close to that present day central Atlantic rift. So this is perhaps a presentation of the uh, uh, ancient continent of Laurentia, which is essentially um, Canada, USA, Iceland at 12 o'clock, and then the um, European section with Great Britain, of course, and Gondwana is uh, shown on Africa. That would be the situation uh, 180 or 200 million years ago uh, when Pangaea, the supercontinent, was uh, rejoicing in its presence. Uh, you'll notice we have a green line that cuts through about the 
English Scottish border right through Central Ireland, crosses the Atlantic uh, and cuts through Newfoundland and then through uh, New Brunswick and New England, where the word Eopetus is down in the um, bottom left corner and slices off Florida. Now that green line is the closure of the first of three Atlantic Oceans. So there's been one since you might say, which followed more closely to the uh, south section of the uh, present day Atlantic. But um, it veered off, uh, you might say, south of Britain um, and uh, into Europe. And uh, that was the Reek Ocean, whereas the earliest one was the Eupetus Ocean. And uh, these are the precursors of the present day Atlantic. Britain below, the Atlantic Ocean separated the North American and Eurasian plates about 180 million years ago but it truncated the Eupetus Ocean, suture, that's the line where the ocean joined, leaving exotic crustal fragments on opposite sides. That means to say bits that really didn't belong on the European side um, are to be found there today because the new Atlantic opened on a slightly different trend. And this applies to uh, Scotland or Scotland and Northern Ireland. They really should be across on the opposite side, somewhere attached to Greenland. And there's further complication in Newfoundland and further to the south, where bits and pieces appear to be on the wrong side. This was uh, observed um, well before the idea of uh, plate tectonics and a full understanding a continental drift, to use inverted commas, because they had what they recognized as fossil trilobites of the same age because of their associated fossils. Uh, but on the um, uh, Laurentian side, or this is the top left side, they were, they were regarded them as an Arctic fauna. And on the um, southeastern side, or I should say the European and um, portions of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and New England, uh, the um, faunas were regarded as more tropical in character. Now, why is this so? Well, um, present day continents might suggest that's reasonable if the ocean had purely separated in a simple way, but the explanation is more complicated and uh, we'll go into that now. In fact, not only we'll go into it, we go back um, in the order of uh, half a billion years or even 600 million years and view the Earth from the South Pole, essentially the South Pole, where we can see Scotland and Northern Ireland uh, sitting in that position against um, the Canadian Arctic islands of today um, on the opposite side of uh, an ocean suture marked in black line with the uh, arrows leading either way, representing the expansion of an opening ocean. Um, but they're very close to the South Pole. And if we move over uh, to the right of those, we can see there's a, another block in red or bright orange marked as Avalonia. Uh, and that's a block that today would occupy uh, New York, New Brunswick, um, portion of uh, Nova Scotia and uh, Newfoundland, and also uh, Southern Ireland, England, and uh, Central Europe or Northern Europe across into Poland. And that <laughs> is a rather extraordinary out of place thing, which would be uh, uh, somewhere closer to the uh, equator, somewhere like Australia's position today. Uh, between 30 and 20 degrees um, of the um, equatorial situation at that time. Actually, I notice down in the bottom section, there's a word Avalon Peninsula in grey. That's entirely spurious and should not be present on this diagram. Now, the Dalradian Scott, rocks of Ireland and Scotland, um, are the oldest rocks 
uh, known in the British Isles, and they represent the same ancient rocks that you get uh, in the Canadian Arctic Islands, Greenland, etc. To Atlantis, somewhere down there in North Carolina. Um, there's also a block to the south there in yellow, marked Cadomia, and that's probably uh, now in central or southern Europe, um, but opened again by a further ocean, which we won't discuss today. So you have here a closed Iapetus Ocean, or essentially closed, and the Rheic Ocean, which uh, has opened and spread this block of Avalonia northward of Gondwana. It's perhaps a complex diagram, but uh, it shows today the um, latest separation of the Atlantic in dashed blue, uh, and the reddish lines are those where the um, essentially the Iapetus and Rheic oceans closed, so that um, where that blue line departs from the red line, you have anomalies in which way certain blocks of continental crust went. And you'll notice that the blue line around the um, Ireland and Scotland um, is actually on the outside or on the Greenland side and has separated those blocks which were brought together initially when um, Avalonia collided with, um, uh, with Greenland or with Laurentia. So it's a fairly complex story, but it shows how closely those sutures of um, three oceans now lie. I should say two oceans because it hasn't shown the Rheic Ocean. One reason being that its suture is fairly parallel, fairly similar to the blue line uh, running along the uh, North American margin, but in the current day Atlantic, and it then spread off and spread through the uh, mid-European Caledonides going around into Poland to the right. Uh, and it just complicates it to put the third one in. Now, if we were to look uh, at Laurentia on the left, Africa is the bulge of uh, Northwest Africa in, in the bottom right. And whoops, a topsy-turvy Spain, a little spot of green on it, running up uh, uh, through Europe and past the British Isles to Scandinavia, which is shown in brown there. Uh, there are three areas I've marked out, one, two, and three, which we'll look at in a little more detail to see how these sutures fit together. A little hard to visualize from that diagram, but uh, let me just read that for you. Mapping of the rock assemblages and structures, that's the folds and faults and breaches in the rocks, etc. cetera. Uh, this allows geologists to determine where these oceans subducted or what we would call the sutures. We'll look at those three regions in more detail. Time might cut us a bit short getting to, to number three, but the Britain, Britain is number one. Uh, then number two would be the region of Newfoundland, Newfoundland um, and uh, New England. And the third is the Southern Appalachian region of the United States and, and down to Florida. Well, these things can be quite complex when you look at the geological maps, perhaps looking at the right hand side there where we recognize Scotland and um, uh, Northern Ireland in particular, um, there's uh, a lot could be said about the geology, but one can recognize where an ocean closed from the fact that you get, uh, I'll call them green stones to be simple. Uh, often they're very serpentinous rocks, or maybe they're uh, a suite of varied things like pillow basalts followed by deep sea sediment, maybe cherts, maybe iron rich sediments. Uh, suffice to say, along with the metamorphic grades of the rocks surrounding them, one can tell with experience where oceans have actually disappeared and you can map a suture. Well, one is marked there in black, almost corresponding to the Scottish-English border uh, and running through the Isle of Man on the bottom of the diagram. Well, that 
is the Eupetus Ocean suture running through the British Isles. Uh, and it separates uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland from what you would uh, expect to be, uh, well, you would expect them to be sitting across near Greenland somewhere. And England anyway is quite uh, an extraordinary, England and Wales, uh, quite extraordinary rock types, which have been introduced all the way from North Africa. Something similar occurs in uh, Newfoundland and on the left, that's the same suture running through Newfoundland. I won't try and describe the detail of all the uh, rocks or the uh, ages and details that are shown on that diagram. It's called the Red Indian Line, interestingly enough, running centrally through uh, Newfoundland. And the areas that are shown in white to the uh, uh, southeast of that, in this particular diagram on the left, uh, is Avalonia. It's part of this block of territory that included England and uh, Wales, uh, southern part of Ireland. Some of these rocks that are so easily recognized, very ancient lavas that were obviously extruded under the sea and formed peculiar pillow structures as they were rapidly quenched by the pressures and uh, cooling of uh, deep ocean water. So they were formed on the sea floor at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. These are a key part of the evidence for what is described as an Ordovician ophiolite complex. Well, an ophiolite complex is the characteristic uh, assemblage of rocks that you see um, in a suture that was once an ancient ocean disappearing. And uh, uh, this is South West Scotland about uh, oh, 400, 450 million years ago. And that's the character and detail of these from uh, a similar region in. Uh, southwestern Scotland, Ballantrae Ophiolite, and the name Ophiolite applies to this characteristic suite of rocks. These are the pillow basalts that occur on the sea floor. You notice the scale there from a large hammer sitting up uh, in mid-right position at the top, or high in the photograph. And those uh, bulges of uh, Molten rock are extruded from fissures, rapidly quenched, and only attain the size of pillows, or perhaps very large ones might get like a small sedan car. Um, again, uh, in the Isle of Man, running right through the centre of the Isle of Man, is this suture, and uh, the rocks can be identified pretty clearly right down to a, a single fault which separates the uh, uh, northern section, uh, the section that really relates to the other side of the present day Atlantic under the uh, geologist's right foot, whereas the uh, left-hand section migrated all the way from uh, Africa. In fact, that under his right foot was way down uh, near the uh, South Pole while the other was near the equator some five or 600 million years ago. So this is the uh, Nyabal Fault, and it marks the Ipetus suture on the Isle of Man. The rocks at top left are formed in Laurentia, and the rocks at the lower right were formed in Gondwana, and hence an ocean closed here. That doesn't necessarily show you the width of the zone uh, involved in um, closure with all the uh, suite of rocks that uh, are involved in subduction, but that can be pinned down to a place where two blocks of country have come from uh, distant locations. Ireland, likewise, the um, Shannon estuary is the outflow flow of the River Shannon. It's the longest river in Ireland and UK for that matter. It drains nearly one fifth of uh, Ireland, about a hundred kilometers of that length um, is here, but a suture, and its location obviously uh, dictated by the presence of this very significant geological structure. In Ireland, a lot of this is actually covered by younger limestones and uh, 
marine rock sequences, but uh, it's well established from uh, geophysics to follow that course. So the northern half of Ireland, you might say, should be um, on the other side of the Atlantic. So that's uh, showing you actually in green uh, rocks that were formed in the Sea of Bitter's Ocean. So it's not a sharp boundary between Laurentian rocks shown in pink uh, and the uh, southern Avalonian margin rocks way down uh, in the bottom right corner of Ireland. On the right-hand side, the geological map shows how much of that is covered by blue, uh, mostly carboniferous limestones, I think, of the order of um, 300, 350 year, million years. So um, little inset shows folding of rocks associated with that deepest suture, and perhaps the next slide gives that in more detail. But the um, continental margin rocks of the Ipetus Ocean were compressed and deformed as the continents collided 470 million years ago. And now they form the basement of Ireland. Ireland then moved close to the equator and a sea extended across the landmass, resulting over the next 50 million years in sediments shown in blue that cover much of these older rocks. And they're very fossiliferous, as you may have uh, followed from one of our previous presentations on the geology of Ireland. So here's a detail of rocks in the region near Dublin, which is very close to this line. It's Louth, County of Louth, uh, and it's in the zone of closure of the Ipetus Ocean. Uh, deformation of the sediments and the igneous rocks of basement across much of this central island resulted from the spreading Reek Ocean that closed the older Ipetus Ocean more than 450 million years ago. As I said earlier, it's Pretty difficult to follow the actual suture of the Reek Ocean, which uh, basically did all the damage and pushed up the mountain ranges and so forth as uh, the Ipetus Ocean closed. But this is a nice view, just some of the deformation of rocks resulting from that closure. To look at that story again, uh, we're looking from the uh, Southern Pole, essentially. Uh, Gondwana covering that, and uh, this is uh, nearly half a billion years ago, about um, 490 million, somewhere before the final closure of the Ipetus Ocean, because its central ridge is shown there in red, and in fact it was it's indicated here as subducting both under Laurentia and under the uh, in the Gander Arc under Africa. So that uh, there's a complex story when you look in detail at these. Suffice to say, the Ipetus um, Ocean uh, is sliding away under Laurentia and Gondwana, and so uh, is getting will get narrower as uh, this rift that we can see separating Avalonia from Africa. Um, just a blue line on this diagram, as that expands into the new ocean, the Reek Ocean, so the Ipetus ocean, ocean will close entirely. Uh, reading from the top left, uh, Ipetus was the early Atlantic Ocean between Laurentia and Gondwana between 600 million and 450 million years ago. It was in about the latitudes of Australia, probably, uh, today, Australia today. And the red line was the spreading ridge. That's like the central Atlantic today, but it applied to the Eopetus Ocean. And the black uh, pointed uh, little tents on it are the directions of subduction of the Eopetus Ocean. That's to the north in the north, to the south in the south. Well, by 490 million years ago, a new rift was forming in North Gondwana, which split off Avalonia as the new Reek Ocean, represented by this red line, expanded to actually take up all the space and uh, cause the closure of Eupetus. This is a less obvious diagram. 
uh, block of country that was split off by um, the Rig Ocean is shown here uh, in blue, pinks, yellow, green, etc. All the various colours. That's a block of or a, a, a long um, uh, isthmus, you might say, of uh, uh, rocks split off from Africa. Uh, the Rig Ocean is shown with its diagonal uh, blue shading and the Rig Ocean is expanding and pushing northward to close Eopatos Ocean along that northern line, the subduction uh, boundary, which is marked or labelled uh, with an arrow. Uh, and it's sliding in essentially under Laurentia in this case, as the Rig Ocean um, and expands, spreads, and Avalonia is being welded against uh, Laurentia. And uh, we can see part of, in the top right in yellow part of uh, Northern Europe. Uh, we see England, Wales, Southern Ireland. As we come further south, uh, we get half of Newfoundland, that's NFL. And then there's uh, various other sections of New England uh, running down North America uh, towards uh, Carolina. Just reading this then, um, uh, Avalonia <clears throat> was a strip derived from northern Gondwana. It was uh, northern South America and northwest Africa at that time. It was carried northward by subduction of the Eupatis Ocean uh, and expanding, or more particularly by the expanding of the Rheic Ocean. And its present day fragments are recognized uh, as listed below. I won't run through all those starting from the South, Connecticut and Massachusetts, et cetera, uh, finding up, ending up at the um, right-hand side in uh, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, and Poland. Uh, going back today, uh, these were, this was the um, suture as the Eupatis Ocean closed. Um, and the zones in yellow uh, show a common crustal structural setting associated with the closure of the Eupatis Ocean. We discussed this briefly in the Isle of Man um, and in um, Newfoundland there, right near Gander in the center of the diagram. But um, suffice to say, this, these were mountain ranges at the time of closure of the um, Eupatis Ocean, uh, 450 million years ago. Uh, a crushing of continental masses resulted in folding, faulting, uh, very intense uh, volcanic activity, both preceded it and, and subsequently uh, injected great masses of granite along those zones. And they're the Caledonides of um, uh, Britain and Norway, Sweden, Norway in particular, I should say, uh, very much altered and crushed rocks of central Newfoundland and the Appalachian Mountain system of the um, New England and Eastern United States. It's perhaps a little bit difficult. Look at the bottom diagram first. And there's just a generalization of where the suture runs between Newfoundland in the uh, top right hand corner in number two in diagram two, uh, swinging uh, around um, Prince Edward Island, not just north of Prince Edward Island and into New Brunswick. Um, that's ground of Green Gables is just shown half green, half yellow there, Prince Edward Island. Um, and it's uh, Nova Scotia lying out to the east of it. Uh, then Maine and other sections of USA extend up uh, in towards Quebec. So that is the line that separates this uh, Avalonia, here called Avalonia and Gandia, and that implies that there was yet another ocean um, involved, or at least a volcanic arc or something that's recognizably different. And you'll notice the name Maguma on southern Nova Scotia. And that is yet another block that came in with a minor um, oceanic uh, closure. And I won't go into all the details. 
and uh, the blues are the main ancient Laurentian margin. Speaking to that in the bottom right, New England to Newfoundland today, yellow and magenta are the complex of crushed sediments, igneous rocks and oceanic crustal blocks that resulted from that subduction of the Iapetus Ocean. Uh, Grey uh, and green are uh, huge transported continental slabs that uh, uh, are referred to either as um, Avalonia or Maguma, two separate slabs. Now, we've just really been discussing that block number two in the top diagram, which is a little more complex, and we won't attempt to unravel that here. But I have outlined uh, in heavier black, uh, at least starting uh, from Scandinavia on the right-hand side and running through the border between Scotland and England, running through Central Ireland, running through centrally in uh, uh, Newfoundland, as it after it's crossed the present day Atlantic, and it takes a bit of a swing around uh, in Nova Scotia. It actually goes uh, north of Prince Edward Island, as I see in this diagram. Finally, swings down between green and orange, or green and brown, out of the diagram in uh, that square number three, titled as it was in Pangaea, Pangaea the ancient supercontinent 400 million years ago, the heavy black dashed line is the Iapetus Ocean closure suture, or well, the suture being the line that marks today the point of or zone of closure against the ancient craton of Laurentia. So here are those blocks again, uh, and more particularly looking at the enlarged areas of two and three. Uh, we can see that suture in Britain labelled fairly clearly. Um, and the Caledonides are the mountains that uh, equate in age to the Appalachians of uh, North America. And there were ancient out mountain ranges uh, running through Europe at the time uh, where we can see the green of Avalonia. Green patches are the blocks that were once one, one piece separated from Gondwana. And then subsequently there was yet another uh, suite of blocks came through, which uh, uh, we see in Northern Spain, perhaps in the uh, uh, very Northwest of France, uh, and also tucked onto the South of Nova Scotia. And back to where we saw that suture here marked in green uh, running all the way through the eastern portion of the United States and Canada through Nova, uh, through Newfoundland, through the British Isles, and then more or less corresponding to the current rift of the Atlantic today. And that's where it all came from again. That's looking back this five or six hundred million years, uh, showing <laughs> that Scotland and Northern Ireland were portion of Laurentia at that time, whereas Avalonia, which is this uh, slab of um, or isthmus of original Gondwana, was more equatorial at the time rather than right near the South Pole, and uh, it's now uh, dispersed from uh, the Carolinas region right through the eastern United States, uh, Newfoundland, Ireland, Southern Ireland and England, and into the uh, portions of Northern Europe. So they were very separate in their origin and uh, are now crushed together by the pure chance of closing oceans. And how does this read? The opening of the Iapetus Ocean 600 million years ago at the South Pole. Now, I say no longitude, uh, longitudes are pretty confusing anyway, but we have no way of calculating longitudes of ancient continental blocks. We just have to relate them to the geology from where we believe they came. In the case, you might say, of Avalonia, uh, the indications of um, uh, latitude and the geology match them pretty well with the junction of uh, uh, South America and West Africa 
and hence that's where that section would be placed. Whereas the uh, uh, latitudes registered in the rocks of Scotland and Northern Ireland uh, would indicate that they're very close to the South Pole. And again, the geology relates them to um, Canadian uh, region or Greenland. Reading that and part of the great symphony of the continents, uh, which I, by which I mean the continents come together. In this case, it would have really not been called Gondwana. This was uh, the residual of the breakup of the earlier supercontinent of Rodinia, which had its uh, main phase about a billion years ago. And by 600 million years ago, the continents had spread in the manner we look at here. And they were in the act of coming together again um, in a slightly different format, a um, matter of 400 million years ago, to give us the supercontinent of Pangaea. And that's what's described as the great symphony of continents. It seems to occur about every 600 million years, you get the continents separating and then coming together again. Uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland were part of Laurentia and near the South Pole, as far as one can judge, and Avalonia, a strip off Gondwana, and much nearer the equator, would hold the secrets of today's bedrock from New York to Warsaw. Uh, when we look at the uh, opening of the third Atlantic Ocean, the real one of, uh, uh, well, that opened as recently as 180 million years ago. I think it's wise uh, to leave the confusion at that point and I'll uh, seek any questions that you may have. <laughs>